Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kenneth. Today's kind of a funny day in the workshop. I got things to build, I got things to repair, I got some tips I gotta set up on some of my tools. So before we get started, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do that. And let's get started. So today was the day I needed to clean out the one of the worm drives in my table saw inside. I can't get a brush in there. It's really hard to clean and it doesn't work properly until you clean that sawdust out every now and again. And this is what I use to clean it out. It's a plastic extension to a, a air connector. Uh, I can use my compressor now and you can use it small or you can use it big. Let me show you what I did. So let me start off by saying this was not my idea. This was sent in by a subscriber and for the life of me, it's taken me so long to get the components here. I've lost your name, but if you send me your email uh, and the other tip that you sent along with this one, um, I'll recognize who it is. But look, um, I need to get into my table saw to clean one of the worm drives in there and it's hard to get into it and when I saw this tip I thought that's a great idea I could really use that now when my with my compressor I only got this little blow gun with that little plastic tip on there uh, so I ended up buying a kit you can buy these kits that come with a variety of different nozzles this one that I had was a small kit uh, and it had a couple of other things in it and it had three nozzles and they were of different lengths and I didn't realize at the time they're actually different diameters as well. So I grabbed one of them and I went to the hardware store and I couldn't find uh, a plastic uh, pipe here that was, that was good enough. I left it for months and months and then the table saw really demanded that I need to fix it. So once again, I went down there and when I went to grab one of these, I realized that they're of different thicknesses. So I grabbed a thicker one and I went down to the hardware store again. And this time I did find one that almost fit, but I still had to do a little bit of drilling uh, with a drill bit to make it fit. Then I used some of the CA glue, the flex, the medium flex. You've seen me talk about that in the past. Um, and I've left it overnight. It's, it's super strong on there. All I did was put a little bit of CA glue further up here so I wouldn't get any in the nozzle. So I put it further up here and then inserted it into the plastic knob or the plastic pipe. And now I can get in with my uh, air compressor and this blowgun attachment and these just attach to the end here they just screw on there and I'm not going to show you going back into the table saw because it's dusty in there but it actually works very very well very quick for me now to get in there and clean that worm drive out quicker and faster so that my table saw is going to work properly again so thanks for that tip well and now it's repair time or modification time however you want to look at it look a few uh, weeks ago or I don't know a couple of months ago I showed you how to make these push blocks I love these push blocks they use something called uh, great tape it's called great tape it's a rug tape an anti-skid rug tape on the bottom and it works great because it gives you something to grip onto and what I had before wasn't working and this stuff actually works really well but look I was using these and I, I had a massive number of boards that I needed to run through the jointer and as I was running through, um, something didn't, it wasn't, I, I didn't miss anything, nothing happened, but I could feel that there was something not right with these. And I, I turned them over and sure enough, because of all of the pushing, it sort of curled up as you can see. And I kept on using them. I actually just turned them around and kept on using them. But as I was using them, I was thinking about, you know, I was pretty optimistic that this glue stuff would stick well enough to the plywood here and not, and not curl up. And it obviously it did curl up. So here's what I'm going to do. I still think this is a great system. I really like this, but what I'm going to do uh, at the end here, and rather than just butt it up, I'm going to take this to my router. I'm going to round this over, and I'm going to bring this great tape up and just tack it here with a couple of staples because this is replaceable. You may want to replace this at some point in time. 
and just put a couple of staples in there and then I'll be that will be a much better system it's not going to pull back uh, not going to pull off and you'll still be able to replace it easy so let's go ahead and do that okay I've taken a moment to set up the router uh, and I put a quarter round bit in there you'll see in a moment and I've isolated that bearing and all that means is the bearing now is absolutely even with the fence so that we get a nice even flow all the way across now I can't just take this it's kind of narrow and I can't really take this and run it through there it might go it might not so what we do with a router we always use a push block we never use a miter gauge on a router table we always use a push block for two reasons it's safer it gives us I make sure that this is always a 90 degree angle so it gives us a safer way of pushing through but it also gives us a backing so that we don't get any tear out there and I'm going to run both of these through and you'll be able to see that in real time and I'll just run these both through quickly and safely in fact I'm going to do both sides of them uh, just so that I have that done There you can see there's a nice smooth transition on there. So I'm just going to go back to the workshop or the workbench now and uh, we'll put on some new great tape on there. Okay, I just took and peeled the backing off. And if you notice, I put a couple of little marks on there. So I make sure that I get it on the right area. But now this, in this way, I'm just going to drop it down on top. So I need to kind of align it. And when I do... There we are. Now I'm just going to take it now and flip it over and just kind of push that down. And now all I need to do is flip that up. It's a little bit long there still. And this side here will be good. Okay, so basically all I'm going to do now is just flip that up there, push it around, and now Here's the staples that I'm using here, so it's not going to poke all the way through. I had made sure I checked that. And now, there, that'll be perfect. That'll hold on there, and I can replace the gray tape if I want to later on down the road. There we go. And I'll go ahead and do the other one, uh, and that's it a new push block with great tape and that's not going to come off now here's a real quick tip this is by jigsaw obviously and i don't store it with a blade inserted in it because it they get bent they get broken uh, they get in the way so i store all of my blades in this old spice jar and it's real handy it's perfect it's easy to get at the problem is i never know where this thing is because they seem to keep moving it around from place to place and i get tired looking around for it so what I ended up doing because I can't use magnets on this what I've done is I'm using hook and loop and you can buy this stuff uh, it comes in rolls comes in packages there's all sorts of ways you can buy it and you can see that I've got a very thin strip I, well hopefully you can see that you don't need a ton of it I've used a little more on here just because it's more convenient and now I store my blades right with my jigsaw so I always know where they're at Here's my old scroll saw. And again, this is a saw that I don't use all that often. And I found this container that I keep the blades in. And it's another one that I keep misplacing the blades for. In fact, sometimes I don't know what the blades are in. So I don't know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do the same thing that I do with my jigsaw. I'm going to use some hook and loop and just put a little bit on the saw and a little bit on this container and now it stays with it all the time i know where it is when i get the saw i just take that off and i can put the blade on well that concludes my video for today and now that i know where my blades are i can go put my jigsaw away but i've had some questions recently on jointing and for those people who have emailed me uh, or asked me questions on that 
Uh, I, I'm posting a video right here. You'll be able to go and see that. Three ways that you can joint wood without a jointer. And there's even more ways than this, but this will get you started anyway. At least some of the ideas that I've used in the past, and hopefully you'll be able to use the same. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.